The ill-fated Jalco's Battle Unit Zeoth on Game Boy, circa 1990. That's right, happy 30th anniversary. Before we proceed any further, I want to take this opportunity and acknowledge the following. Brooklyn Interactive Group, Somerville Media Center, Lynn Community TV, Cambridge Community TV, Arlington Community Media, Belmont Media Center, Ian Bergeson from 16-Bit Heroes, Chavez Slovakia, The Mount Vernon Kid, Blasphemous HD, Mario B. and Nicole, High Energy Vintage, New Alliance Gallery, Bitbar Salem, Lauren Pespisa from Renters Radio and Antisocial Conditioning, MIT, Harvard, Kenzie Bach, Boston City Councilor District 8, Voxney, Andrew Efford Lowry, Old School Gamer Mama, Jay Shetty, Darman Studios, we're not just telling stories, we're changing Changing lives. James Rolf and Company from Cinema Massacre, Mike Matei, Dave White and Joe Rutherford from GameSack, Blast Processing Video Games, and finally, Sniper Wolf. With these out of our system, onto the main plotline. A cybernetic alien race by the name of Grain has invaded all humankind in a futuristic setting, all thanks to their secret underground self-replicating machine base, which was formed upon their retreat 42 years following the long epic war between them and the Earth. A decade later, a new attack force acting on behalf of the Grain has decimated New Age City, to which the Earth's military organization decides to deploy the titular alien combat mecha, Battle Unit Zeoth, to once and for all exterminate the Christ out of the ongoing Grain onslaught. Gameplay-wise, what could one possibly expect other than yet another action-infused shmup slash platformer hybrid? Except here you're put in control of the aforementioned Zeoth as it pursues and puts the invading green armies the fuck out of action. There's five stages in total, with three featuring auto-scrolling horizontal scenes and two featuring free-roaming vertical scenes, all of which aren't just filled to the mark with every minor and massive jerk-off adversary, with some occasional mines planted midway, but contain necessary weapons and items about which, as ever, will be elaborated as this unravels, in a rather progressive poise as it were. Control-wise, the D-pad lets the Big Z travel around and aim to a CPU's content, as in their heart's content for humans, except we're dealing with a fucking mecha here, on land and in air I might add. While BNA fires off its main artillery, specifically the default Vulcan bullets and or laser beams, and activates its jetpack for levitation respectively, Oh, and B also sets off its hyperbomb upon tapping it twice, thereby not only nuking the Christ out of every enemy on screen, akin to the crucifix in Konami's Castlevania and the satellite beam in Bandai's Dino Wars, but also absorbing two units of its health tragically. Getting back to the weapons, the default Vulcan bullets and occasional lasers are the only two available by swapping between them whenever appropriate. And what's more, you can also enhance their attack power attributes by nabbing the P icon, and they're not affected in any way, shape, or form whatsoever whenever the weapons are swapped. In addition, Zeoth contains an 8-unit health meter, which can be replenished at any juncture by obtaining the U icon, or again the P icon, in case both weapons are at their max. But if it collides with any adversary or their own weaponry too often, consider the mech and yourself totally fucked. At the end of each area, a confrontation ensues between your mech and a colossal rampaging WMD, each more threatening and brutal than the last, making even the core ships from Konami's Gradius and Life Force assembled in harmony look like a class of goddamn pre-kindergartners. Seriously? Unless you're attentive enough in evading every returning firing pattern, not just in loading one floor of fire after another no less. Expect an all-expenses-paid one-way ticket to the jackass junkyard following every nerve-shattering demise, and I do mean every, every mother goddamn, goddamn fucking nerve-shattering nerve -shattering demise! Anyways, all suspense aside, the controls are at the very least nuts and bolts, and far from a godforsaken mind scrambler. Ditto for the always straightforward, if at times redundant, gameplay framework. Concerning the challenge, in direct comparison to the other hidden Game Boy gems I've covered in the past, Zeoth is yet another in the series of cakewalkish doozies disguised as extreme rage-inducing, bastard-screwing, bootlicking clusterfucks of frustrating shit attack tests. Attrition and strategy are key, hence what I addressed about the projectile and hazard pattern evasions, about which I advise referring back to at this point. In addition, remaining on your guard every step of the way, and maintaining your stats to the best of your capabilities, especially regarding the two weapons, are also vital to the Mighty Mech's overall survival and success. Even during the boss confrontations, running the gamut from easy-peasy pickings to boisterous, ball-busting bedlam, depending on your familiarity with every space for taking immediate cover and target weak points. Did I forget to mention their Symphony continues upon death? 
Despite this obvious benefit, however, not only are both your current score and weapon attributes reset to fuck all, you'll always end up starting your current stage from the get-go, which to me is an absolute fucking buzzkill. But consider yours truly an honest-ass exception here. And it's 20 bucks worth of free advice, you're best off looking past that, as well as sucking up to everything this game will throw at you each chance it gets, while grasping the best understanding of how each scene plays out, and then some. Graphically, while everything's primitive and outdated as all get out, the cutscenes and background designs are out of sight, and allow me to point out that under no circumstances am I exaggerating here, thanks to the latter's multi-layer scrolling, reminiscent of Konami's Fall of the Foot Clan and Nemesis, and what better way to describe the different portrayals of the Zeoth mecha during the supporting introductory and concluding cutscenes, as well as in-game, than being nothing more than a towering pillar of dynamism in every pivotal move it makes. The always approaching armadas of adversaries could have used more aggressive entrances and more pizzazz, Likewise for the free-roaming vertical areas, in said case, more ingenuity. But then again, it's the motherfucking Game Boy we're talking about here, so why harp on its qualities and limitations, right? Music and sound-wise, orchestrated by Akihito Hayashi of Goal, Pinball Quest, Short Order, and Explode, Shooting Range, Bandai Golf Challenge, Pebble Beach, and even SD Gundam Gaiden Night Gundam Story 2 fame, is undeniably decent as the themes are, be prepared to look the other goddamn way as they'll drone over you as often as Bill Lumberg and the two Bobs, Slidell and Porter, from Mike Judge's office space. In all fairness, however, the sound effects aren't annoying in any way whatsoever, except maybe when the Big Z gets told to absolute shit. Nor are the following themes, the opening title theme, areas 1, 3, and 5, hence all the auto-scrolling scenes so far, and the boss theme. In terms of replayability, considering the fact that this game doesn't have much to offer, in terms of tougher challenges, weapon and enemy variations, or better yet, direct approaches to navigating every area while learning to evade and or counter every incoming opposition dependent on which type of area you're in. At least it's manageable enough for you to rethink set approaches in between each potential playthrough session. Granted, even that's not saying much. But why the fuck bother beating around the bush over a plethora of simple ass expectations or improvements, right? Either way, you'd be out of your Christ forsaken mind to turn down the often overlooked battle unit Z off. <laughs> Henceforth, what's my final verdict? As I succinctly laid down with Section Z last time, your level of tolerance may vary depending on your overall mindset regarding this game. In addition, it's easy to comprehend why many turn away from it, about which I'm in no position to reiterate for fuck's sake. But in all honesty, I possess a cast iron belief, pun barely intended, that many should indulge in this obscure ass handheld title, whose pricing range lies between the following for a loose copy, 15 to 17 bucks, or for a completed box copy, between 125 and 216 bucks, if probably less concerning both cases. Therefore, I'd get my ass out there and blast off to much needed freedom and victory with Battle Unit Z off. Until then, happy holidays and a kick ass new year. This is the one and only Hardcore Retro God triumphantly signing off. On support Milton Waddams, cause even the most timid individuals have their breaking points as well.